Everything is possible if you make the right choices. It will take all my skill and my silver tongue to solve this mystery. Before it's too late. How many times must I tell you? You must never put your life on the line for me. Mother has always had a fascination for Lord Mortimer, but has never wanted to tell me why. We are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. All I can tell you is I'm looking for my sister. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. Johann Christoph von Wulne, Minister of Religious Affairs, and Jacques Perrou, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. You will find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. I do apologize for being late. I was obliged to clear up some urgent business. At last we meet, Monsieur de Richet. Do you mind if I call you Louis? Please do. Thank you. I wish to apologize wholeheartedly, Louis. I made you cross the seas, and I wasn't even here to welcome you. When I asked you to join us here, it, it was, of course, in the hope that you would help us find your mother. However, there may be some new developments, but I, I don't know if they are linked to your mother. We have found Elizabeth Adams' body in her room. I'm afraid she was brutally murdered, stabbed several times. I can't believe it. We, we bumped into each other last night on our way to bed. Yes, I know. Duchess Hillsborough informed us that she accompanied you at the beginning of the evening. You apparently bumped into Miss Adams, who wanted to speak to you. We are told you turned her away, and she went away on her own. That's correct. Do you know what she wanted to see you about, by any chance? She seemed upset about something. I thought she was under the influence of alcohol, but we didn't really speak. Pity. The poor child was probably trying to find help. I thought it could wait until tomorrow. Hmm. Apparently not. Louis, I shan't hide the fact that this tragedy puts me in a very delicate situation. I cannot risk upsetting the smooth operation of our next conference. But the case cannot remain unaddressed. I must reassure my guests and... Justice will be done. And for that to happen, I must ask for your help. Why is that? You met Elizabeth. You spoke together, I believe. She trusted you. Listen, Louis. Find out who could have committed this murder. I refuse to believe that one of my guests is the murderer. I want to know who is responsible for this. And I trust you. You have my backing. You must stop at nothing. Can I count on you? Of course. How would you like me to proceed? Maybe you could start by going to the scene of the crime. Elizabeth was attacked in her room. Do you have any suspects in mind, my lord? I spent most of the night talking with Sir Gregory and his eminence Piaggi. So I think you can remove them from the list of suspects. Monsieur Bonaparte and President Washington left the party after midnight, I believe. They were tired and went up to bed. Can you tell me anything else about what happened? Now, Louis, I wouldn't want to influence you. Get over there and form your own opinion. 
Right. I'll get over there immediately. Thank you, Louis. Now, once you've finished, come back and let me know your findings. I'll be waiting. And, Louis, you've got permission to search through the guests' rooms. They've all been notified and they agree. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, uh, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's uh, probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. But if I were you, my son, I would talk to Monsieur Peru. You remember how violently he set upon Miss Adams. Oh, don't worry. He's on the list of suspects. Good day, Monsieur de Richet. Mr. Volner, are you looking for anything in particular? Next to Elizabeth's room? I... I... No. No, I... Nothing special. Has anyone told you that Elizabeth was killed last night? I... Yes. Rumors spread quickly. Huh. He looks very put out. It's... Uh... It's horrible. Uh, how did it happen? I can say nothing to you, sir. You'd better follow your host's instructions and stay in your quarters. I shall leave you now, sir. I will return to my room. Chest with a half circle pattern. An untutored hand copied these notes. Looks like a healing method. Well, that's a pity. The writing is barely legible. Feet and hands are bound. A piece of cloth in the mouth prevents the tongue from being sectioned. It looks like preparation for an exorcism. Is Elizabeth really possessed? Feet and hands are bound. A piece of cloth in the mouth prevents the tongue from being sectioned. It looks like preparation for an exorcism. Is Elizabeth really possessed? Has Sir finished with this room? No, I haven't gone over everything yet. Uh, sir may take his time. When Sir would like to leave, Sir has only to tell me. 
dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you'll be able to put all of this behind you one day. The clock stopped at 3.54. If it was smashed during the murder, then I've just established the time of the crime. That would clear Emily de facto because she was still with me at the time. Vials of laudanum. Large quantities could knock out a bull. Could Elizabeth have been drugged? If the body wounds are anything to go by, then clearly not. She put up a fierce fight. The label shows that this laudanum comes straight from America. I wonder if Washington's involved. Devil's Thorn. A pentagram? What the hell's been going on here? Contrary to what most people believe, a pentagram's not there to conjure up, I don't know, what evil or demonic creature. With the point toward the top, the pentagram is an ancient symbol of protection against evil. Many esoteric rituals are based on this shape. Could Elizabeth have been sacrificed during an occult ritual? A notebook written in Elizabeth's handwriting. It is written in a mix of several languages. Not too easy to work out. It looks like a mixture of medieval Latin and Anglo-Norman. It is difficult to make sense of this jerky writing. I can make out some passages, though. He's coming. The demon is upon me. He's coming back to kill me. There she is. Death has come to finish me off. I've just run into her son. That was her last entry. What tortured writing. Novel of the initiation of a young woman into a polite society. June 11th, 1791. My dear Elizabeth, your last letter gave me much cause for concern. Your words were so cold, as if emotions no longer matter to you. Father maintains that the secondary effects of your treatment still trouble you, but that they will soon subside. Should I believe him? I cling to the belief that we shall soon see each other again, at long last, right soon. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. Don't forget to tell me what present you want. A pistol? Fairly new, I'd say. And judging by the weight of it, Fairly light. A tribute engraved on the barrel. To the liberators of France. Hmm. There's a few dried traces of blood on the grip. Difficult to know for sure how they got there. It's extremely well maintained. The barrel is perfectly clean. It isn't loaded and... There's no traces of gunshot residue. 
I conclude that it hasn't been used recently. Right. I shall have to find its owner. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you. But they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day to be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. 30 November, 1791. My dear sister, the cancellation of our reunion hit me like a stab to the heart. Father told me it was for your well-being, but I can't help but blame him. He claims that your condition has worsened and that it could be dangerous for both of us if we met. If only I knew where you were, believe me, I'd be at your side. I haven't received any news from you in a long time. Please write. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. I hope you like the enclosed talisman. piece of fabric. High quality at that. I'd say it's silk. Going by the texture and the gray hue, it must come from a, a dress, that kind that women of quality wear. It's a travel dress. The silk has been lightly waxed to protect it from bad weather. And I know the very woman who came up with the idea, given all the traveling she does. My mother. God help us. Why did she come here in the first place? The material appears to have undergone abnormal wear and tear. She must have been scouring the countryside, and that doesn't look good. Huh. The talisman that I gave back to Elizabeth. I can't exactly say it brought her good luck. talisman that I gave back to Elizabeth. I can't exactly say it brought her good luck. Blood spatter indicates that the murder must have held Elizabeth upright during the attack. Even if Elizabeth wasn't very big, I, I doubt she wouldn't have put up a struggle. It takes tremendous strength to overpower someone like that. blade is short and thin. Well sharpened, apparently. It's covered in blood. Still fresh. The lower part of the handle is unsullied by blood. The murderer gripped the weapon so tight that there's no blood where he held it. The handprint indicates a small and slender hand. over a bottle of wine. I know that smell. It's laudanum. It must have been mixed with the wine directly in the bottle. What kind of plonk is that? Hey, it's a Bordeaux. That's a Chateau de Brion. It's a great wine. I don't know what's happened to this wine, but... It's undrinkable. Poor girl bled to death. Whoever left that footprint has boats for feet. That's at least a size 15. 
Where's a size like that here? Peru? Washington, maybe. There are numerous marks on the body. She must have fought like a lion. It couldn't have happened without a lot of noise. There are also a number of old scars. Scarring, ugh. Scarring isn't very regular, but they're mostly from old cuts. Scars are superficial and were made several years ago. She wasn't trying to take her own life. People who scar themselves in this way generally do so to release some kind of psychological suffering. By trying to master the pain, they establish their self-control. She had the Sigillum de Amoth tattooed on her, the symbol of the living God, written in the language of angels, according to believers. It is rare for someone to know about symbols like this at her age, unless her mother was a tutor. Symbol of the Masons? What's that doing here? Ancient Greek. Let's see what it means. These are sacred chants intended to protect their bearer. But from whom? Or from what? I count no fewer than nine wounds on the thorax with a lot of blood. On first sight, I'd say that's what caused her death. Wounds are clean and look like They've been inflicted by a sharp object. Some of the lacerations of damaged vital organs, the heart, the right lung, which is perforated. Most of them weren't given with much force. She might even have survived. But the stab in the heart, though not all that deep, sealed their fate. So the wounds were inflicted from a precise angle, as if, as if the murderer was standing behind Elizabeth. Some of these tattoos are veritable works of, what's that? The skin between her breasts is different. Bloody hell! This tattoo was drawn on a page of leather and stitched onto her skin, probably during childhood. The scars are anything to go by. It's the same kind of tattoo as on the rest of her body. I see no sign of bruising on the skull. The only clue is a scar from a previous craniectomy. Poor Elizabeth, she... She must have been very young when she went through all that. That's torture. She also has old scars around the neck, maybe mutilations. She bled from the nose. There are signs of bleeding, but I don't see any traces of bruising. A strange smell. Her breath it smells of alcohol and of laudanum. People use it to relieve pain. No wounds, but 
Blood on the right hand. Nothing on the left except that tattooed symbol. This pinnacle's a trap. The wearers of the pinnacle thought that they were protected from evil by surrounding it inside the different circles of the pinnacle. Blood, but no trace of blows on the legs. More tattoos, similar to those on the rest of her body. Let's see. No trace of sexual assault or rape. Has Sir finished with this room? I know enough now. Thank you. Very well, Sir. Sir may return whenever need be. I shall guard the door. I've come to speak about the findings of the investigation, my lord. I'm listening, Louis. Will you remind me of the facts we already know about? Elizabeth Adams was killed last night. But Piaggi was with Holm and I until late at night. As for Bonaparte and Washington, they left us after midnight, both tired. I believe I've identified the murderer. Really, Louis? All right, then. Please, think carefully before you give me your answer. This is a very, very serious accusation. I believe it was suicide. Suicide? Louis, I... I hope you have solid evidence. She overdid the laudanum and the wine, probably to take away her anxiety. She could have decided she couldn't go on and acted while she was not her normal self. Uh, sounds a bit far-fetched to me, but it isn't without logic. Anything else? The knife found beside Elizabeth's body had a handprint on it, a slender hand, without a doubt the hand of a woman. And Elizabeth is the only female guest? Come, Louis. Anything else? She was covered in scars from previous acts of scarification. That proves that she was prone to harming herself. Her suicide was the culmination of this. What you say makes sense, but it's a little weak. Haven't you anything else? It is my conviction that she killed herself. So she stabbed herself nine times? Really? That's very hard to believe, Louis. Louis, I'm afraid this is simply not sufficient. This is a serious accusation. I need concrete evidence. That is why I am taking over this case as of now. Right. It's time we spoke about your mother, Louis. She seems to be making every effort to steer clear of your guests. What, what do you mean? For the past few weeks, my mother's been playing cat and mouse, if you will. I don't know why, but it wouldn't surprise me to learn that she's trying to avoid someone. The question is, who? And in your opinion, would she be the cat or the mouse? I'd like to answer the cat, but unfortunately I'm increasingly worried that she's, in fact, the mouse. That doesn't make me feel any better, Louis. What was the official reason why my mother came to your island? 
I knew about your mother's activities and yours in the Golden Order. I thought we had everything to gain by working together. You mean the cannon deal with Monsieur Bonaparte? Among others, yes. How did you hear about that? Monsieur Bonaparte came to speak to me about it yesterday, during lunch. I see. So impetuous. He was supposed to let me speak to you about it first. Our friend Napoleon desperately needed financial backing to properly equip his army. I took it upon myself to back him, because I have a firm conviction that he can go far. We shall see. However, there's one thing that surprises me. Isn't Bonaparte a bit young to deserve so much attention? Well, you come straight to the point. I like that. Indeed, if you knew just how much you remind me of him. Trust me, I'll wager that Monsieur Napoleon will soon prove himself. I'm working on it, at least. Once this deal was closed, I had big plans for Sarah. Such as what? You see, I've invited several influential figures on my island to present them with a project at the conference. It will be presented later today. I thought that the Golden Order had a role to play. And I still think so. I was hoping Sarah would be able to join us. Hmm. I see. Indeed, if by chance your mother decided not to return to us before the conference, would you do me the great honor of attending? If only to follow the deliberations while waiting for her to duly take her seat. Why not? We shall see. Ah, thank you so much. In this way, you'll be able to keep your mother informed of what is said. Um, there's something else I'd like to briefly go over. Earlier, you asked me the official reason for your mother's presence here. Is there an off-the-record reason why your mother came here? She... she was looking for someone. What, what do you mean? In Paris, we were working on a smuggling case to do with occult objects. We had just arrested a dealer who intended to go to you to meet a buyer. My mother was here to find out to whom he intended to sell his stolen treasure. Oh. Uh, what was the name of your dealer? I can't remember exactly. Von... Oh, something or other. Von Volner? No. Not your friend, Mr. Von Volner. There's something I still don't get. In your opinion, why would your mother remain in hiding over several weeks? Maybe she found something out. What do you mean? My mother has a gift for investigating. If she had picked up a lead, nothing would have stopped her. The only thing I can tell you is that Sarah had indeed changed. At the beginning of her stay here, we enjoyed spending time together, solving the world's problems. You seem to know my mother very well, my lord. What did you talk about together? Oh, as soon as we had a little free time, we liked to share points of view about practically any subject. We would find ourselves embarked on interminable discussions that could go from Monsieur Blanchard's flight in a hot air balloon to the Treaty of Jassy, or the adoption of the metric system in France last year, or even Mr. Eli Whitney's invention in the United States. Ah, yes, his famous cotton gin. It was supposed to revolutionize cotton production in the United States. It will revolutionize the world, Louis. The potential of this invention is much greater. Tomorrow, all industries will be switching to simple but large-scale production. Of that, I'm sure. I'm surprised she didn't get you started on the Crusades. It was her favorite subject. <laughs> Are you joking? Sarah and I spent entire days together reliving them. It so happens that the Crusades are also my subject of predilection, especially the Third. My ancestor distinguished himself brilliantly during the Siege of Saint-Jean-d'Acre.
mother lulled my childhood with tales of the Crusades. How Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus had to battle it out to achieve their ends. And how Guy de Lusignan, having broken his word, launched the siege of saint jean d'Acre. Oh, I see Sarah's lessons have inspired new enthusiasts. Good on you, because not everyone can claim they know as much at your age. Your mother is a very well-read woman. You're quite lucky to have her as a model, Louis. Yes, I know. But I'm still very worried. I must admit, there are worse things to worry about now, Louis. What do you mean? Since she disappeared, your mother has been seen once. Her behavior on the evening of your arrival greatly surprised Gregory and myself. She resurfaced to attack Emma. Emily Hillsborough's twin sister, and she shot her with a pistol. Then, before Gregory could intervene, she ran off and disappeared again. I beg your pardon? Hang on. That means my vision on the wharf, it, it was actually happening inside the manor. Mother shot Emily's sister? The very person she came looking for? Why would she do that? Excuse me, but between that and the childhood of Lady Adams, it's... It's all a bit much for me to cope with. I need to piece it all together again to see things more clearly. You said that you spent a lot of time talking together at the beginning. What happened for that to change? I'm afraid I, I haven't much to tell you. The more the days went by, the more she withdrew into herself. She never gave me an explanation. Until the day came when she purely and simply disappeared. <laughs> Where... Where did she go when she wanted to be alone? She would shut herself away in a room we use as a box room upstairs. W would you allow me to go there? Naturally, Louis, of course. I'll send you a servant to open it. Thank you. That's all I can tell you about the disappearance of your mother, Louis. I would like to have been more helpful. I shall stay on her trail and follow up any leads. Thank you. Uh, we will meet uh, later on to welcome our last guest. In the meantime, I shall get someone to open the box room upstairs for you. Thank you. Hmm, the room is just opposite Mortimer's study. 